let's get started on this project. The only thing I did off camera was take out the battery. You guys don't need to see that just for the sake of time. But yeah, we got a whole bunch of parts to install and I just don't know where to start to be honest with you. So yeah, hang on for the ride. Um, hopefully you guys, you know, enjoy the series as much as I do. My whole goal for this is to make, I don't know, somewhere around 300 to around 350 wheel horsepower. I'm not looking to make a whole bunch of more power, but hopefully we can make this car a little bit more enjoyable than it already is. Now I'll be perfectly honest with you, this car from the factory is already awesome. It makes enough power, but you know, a little bit more can't hurt. So let's go ahead and see if we can achieve those numbers on the Civic Type R. What's our ethanol content right now? It's cold weather, 68, we should be good. Yep, I got a couple of snow flares going on right now. Just got off work. But here you go, I just wanna give you guys a quick update on what's going on with the STI. I know I haven't been showing you guys much of the STI lately, but that is for good reason. One, I'm having a few small issues with it. Don't worry, it's nothing big. No, it's not the engine, you sick bastards. I know what you guys are thinking, but I'm having a few suspension issues. One, I'm having a noise coming from somewhere in the rear, and I think it's the old rear lower control arm, control arm, sorry, I'm cold right now, that I had on my old WRX that I autocrossed the hell out of. Uh, those control arms that I have currently on the car right now probably have around 80,000 miles in combination with the WRX and the STI so those need to be changed out those bushings are probably worn uh, if you guys don't know I have Fortune Auto 510 series coilovers that were on Casey's car before and then he gave them to me so they have about 50 or 60,000 miles on those coilovers so those need to be sent back to be rebuilt but anyways enough of me babbling and talking it's really cold out here it's about 30 degrees but anyways I gotta get home it's freaking cold now I'm hungry I just got off work but anyways let's go roll the clip Now, first off, I just wanna say big thanks to Spencer at PRL Motorsports for taking care of us in acquiring some of these parts for the Type R. Now, full disclosure, they did give us a small discount on some of those parts, but still, regardless, this stuff was not cheap. Now, we have worked with PRL Motorsports in the past when they made products for the 15 Up WRX. I think we did an install and review on the 15 Up WRX front mount intercooler that they had and some EGR TGV deletes, I think, I am not sure, but that was like four years ago. But once again, Big thanks to you, Spencer, at PRL. Okay, first, let's take out this intake box. I don't think the intake actually came with instructions, so I'm just gonna wing it, screw it, all right? Next up, we have a bolt that is way down in there. Just make sure you grab a nice long extension in order to reach it. And just for reference, this is where we're at. We're on the driver's side of the car. And if you just go all the way down, you'll see that bolt right there. All right, I just left it loose for now. This car is stock, so none of this stuff has been taken out before, which is a good thing. Ah, there you go. All right, next up we have this pipe right here and I'm looking at it. This has a weird little hose clamp on there that doesn't have any threaded ends on there. So I'm wondering how to get that off. <laughs> okay. What the hell? Come on now. These are metal, I don't wanna bend that metal. Son of a, let's spray some penetrating lubricant in there. I don't know if that's gonna help, but anything to help take that off because there's no way to take it off unless I break that clamp. Oh, it does help. Look at that. It's coming off now. Oh, look. Huh, it wasn't too bad. Now I've had this car for only two months now. And I've only put about 400 miles on it. And I'm gonna be totally honest with you, I'm very, very eager to start driving this car more. This car, every time I drive it, I like it even more and more. But we have to take out this turbo inlet. I didn't know that there was an aftermarket turbo inlet, so I should have ordered that. I didn't, I'll just do that in the future, only because we have more stuff, not only to order for this Type R, but also for the Subaru. So the whole goal on, on this Type R is to make, I don't know, about 350, 400, 
100 wheel horsepower. I'm seeing a couple of aftermarket turbo kits that are being sold out there, but I don't know. That's going to be later on down the line. But with that said, let's take this off. Let's take this heat shield off. I've never done this before. If you guys see me doing anything wrong, please let me know. You're not going to hurt my feelings at all. Okay, so I looked up a couple of tutorials online on how to take off this inlet. It doesn't look all that hard. It's just a bunch of 10 millimeters. Taking out, I think there's another 10 millimeter back here that I got to take out. I think I'm supposed to take that off. I don't know. Looks like I am. The only one I'm worried about are the two tens down there, only because they look like they're hard to get to. Just trying to find an extension that will fit. Oh, almost dropped it. Oh, great. Okay, so we got this off, I think. All right, went ahead and got it. Dummy me, it was a 10. I mean, it was a 12, not a 10. Oh no. Son of a. Figured, you know what? That 12 millimeter is going to stay down there until I get there. I have another 12 millimeter. So, you know what? Let's just go ahead and do this. All right, got it. Okay. Got one. Didn't drop, thankfully. Okay, went ahead and got it. I think I did. Okay, so I guess the next thing we have to do is take off the O2 sensor and this heat shield. Now, from what I've been seeing online, that there is a bolt that's in the front that's really hard to get to, and I'm not looking forward to that, but you know what? We gotta do what we gotta do, right? Just like with the inlet. And where's the connector for this? But I really enjoy it, you know? Just working on something that's out of my comfort zone. Ah, okay, I get it. So you just push down on this clip, Right, if you have it this way, you're gonna push down on this little clip right here, and it'll come right out. All right, so there you go. There's that. You know my O2 sensor socket. Hopefully it fits. If not, I'm gonna have to do this tomorrow. Oh, yep, it fits. Awesome. can't even see it, so I'm gonna have to reach down there and try to find it one way or the other. All right, I think I went and figured it out, so it's not easy. Well, it's not as bad as I thought it would be, so I'm just gonna reach down in there from the driver's side. And I already cracked it loose. I think I do. Oh, no, don't drop. All right, got that out. Actually, you know what, that wasn't that bad. Okay, so now we're at this point. I'm just gonna soak everything with PB Blaster, these um, actual bolts right here, these studs. You know, pretty much the same thing on, you know, most turbo cars. Sometimes these like to snap. So I'm gonna soak them up overnight and we're gonna come back tomorrow. I think Jeff might be coming over to help uh, give me a hand. We both don't know what we're doing, so. But other than that, um, I don't know. Does this come out from the top or the bottom? I'm not sure. I still have to disconnect that other O2 sensor. You just start soaking the hell out of these things. Let it sit. I'm gonna soak all of them, and then back tomorrow for some more shenanigans. Some studs. It's got a stud there, bolt here. Yeah. Bolt there, and a stud down there. I'm assuming they did studs on the corners to hold the gasket in place. <laughs> All right, guys, so here we are. We got Jeff here in the house giving us a helping hand. There goes Jeff Subaru, as you guys can see. PRL, front mount intercooler, which they don't sell anymore. We were what, one of the first ones to get those? Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome, like four years ago. <laughs> so all the downpipe studs, or studs and bolts, are pretty loose. I didn't really have much trouble with them. I so so soaked it down with some PB Blaster and just put some steady pressure on it, and it just cracked loose. All right, guys, we're having a small <laughs> issue with one stud. It's definitely not wanting to come out. It's real tight, yeah. but... Everything on the bottom is uh, already taken out. I, wonder, I mean, it can't be that far in there. As you can see, yeah, right there, you can see the the middle of the stud there, yeah. where it's got the flats on it. And the stud's gonna come out regardless. Oh, yeah, the stud's coming out. I just uh, don't know how far it's in there and why it's getting so tight coming out. Yeah. But the only one going. thing to do is keep going. Yeah, I mean, we went this far. So we have a half inch drive. Um, socket on there, and it's still giving us a little problem. See now the now the nuts turning, the stud stopped turning. Oh really? Yep. Well, that's gonna be interesting. Yes, it is. But I have an idea. If the stud stays in there, 
and this nut comes off, I'll have a way to get the stud back in. We're gonna double nut it? Yep. Oh, that's gonna be pretty tough though, huh? It will. I probably wouldn't put this nut back on. Yeah. Those threads are gone. Yeah. How the hell do you take it out with that big ass cat in the way? This little bracket's gotta come out that holds the wiring harness. I know. Yeah, this guy right here on the side. All right, so the OEM downpipe slash catalytic converter is now out. That was kind of a pain to take out. Yeah, he was just telling me we can sell these things and make money. People will buy these things. Oh, yeah. I thought I was just gonna throw it away. Some big money. Yeah. Oh, well. The more you know. So. so this stud on the top of the turbo there, we finally double nutted it and it would turn about half a turn one direction, half a turn the other direction. Once we got to break loose, we noticed that the stud was crooked in the hole. Hopefully the threads can be saved in the turbo. Yep. All right guys, and we're back. Jeff got his tap set, but luckily, let me just show you guys something. Where's that stud at? We have extra an extra stud. Now this this is actually for a Subaru turbo, and surprisingly, it's pretty much the same. It threads into the turbo, same thread, same everything. All right, Jeff, what do we do, man? Whole bunch of work done. Yeah, we got uh, that tap run through that hole and uh, straightened out all those threads. Luckily, you had a groom speed stud laying around from your WRX yeah. that uh, happens to be the exact same thread <laughs> and same length as the factory Honda studs. That's good to know, the Subaru studs are pretty much the same thread yeah. and, well, I think it's just a little shorter, right? Um, yeah, it's slightly shorter. There's our overall length on this one. Oh yeah, not too bad. Just a hair shorter. And this uh, this center ring here is, on the Honda one, it's centered in the in the middle here but that's plenty of threads to get into the turbo and it'll work just fine yeah. for what we need. So we got the threads all cleaned up, so we're just gonna mm. put a little bit of red Loctite on it and then uh, put it on in there. Yeah. I'll be ready to install the downpipe. Down pipe. Alright guys, so Jeff's just tightened down the O2 sensor. We got the downpipe all put in, installed, we even got the heat shield back in because I'm an idiot. I accidentally ordered a downpipe blanket instead of a turbo blanket. That's okay, I'll just order one in the future and have to go through this mo the motions all over again. But right now, uh, the bottom ones are tight, the, all the bottom bolts, you guys need, need to see that, it's super duper easy. Um, but next, we have to tackle the uh, inlet pipe, which I'm not looking forward to because this was kind of a pain um, to get off of there. Now, I'm just worried about trying to get access to these two bolts here, but luckily we have Jeff here to help out. I'm on the phone, check this out. It barely ever snows in my area and we got some snow. So unfortunately, I can't go do Subaru things because I am still on those RE71 R tires and those do not work very well in the snow, I'll tell you that. But yeah, I'll be working on the Subaru in the background while we're doing the Honda stuff so we can get back to doing Subaru things. And then later in the springtime, we're gonna do some Miata stuff because I need to do some stuff to that. But yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. I appreciate your guys' support, whether it's Honda content, Subaru content, or Miata content. I really do appreciate it. But anyways, it's about 20 degrees out here. It's freaking cold. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace out, guys. So I got already up the intercooler pipe and changed mm -hmm. these out, but that's super duper easy. Yeah. And then we got the front mount intercooler. Next is this. That's where the flex fuel kit mounts. Right oh, that's there. easy. Super duper easy. It's just fuel line. Yeah. So. And if threads can't be saved, I guess it's... New turbo time. Yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>